Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory and this is Would You Make It? I was at a craft sale and somebody asked me if I could make him a regulation size end grain chessboard. Uh, we went back and forth with several design ideas and we finally ended up with this one that is a chessboard that is 18 inches square. So each of the individual squares is two and a quarter inches and it's going to be wrapped with a frame that's three and a half inches wide and that can serve as a ledge to hold the, the pieces that are no longer in play. So, let's get started. I'm going to cut the squares of the chessboard out of ash and walnut. I'm using ash because it has a really interesting end grain. I'm using 10 quarter inch boards and these are so thick that I can't cut it with a single pass. So I'm flipping them over to cut the other side. Next, I'm running the pieces through the jointer to get a straight edge, and then I can run it through my table saw. Now I'll use that straight edge along my fence to cut each board in half. That will cut it down to a reasonable size so that I can run the face through the jointer, because I only have a six inch jointer. And now the pieces are about five inches wide and I can run the face through the jointer to flatten the face and then I'll run the edge through the jointer again to square it up. And now I'll run the boards through the table saw one last time to cut the individual pieces and I'm cutting these a little bit larger than two and a quarter inches because I'm going to run them through the planer to get very precise dimensions. Now I'll run each of the pieces through the planer. And because I want square pieces, I'm running them through top to bottom and side to side. Before gluing up, I'm going to adjust the pieces so that the grain is oriented in a similar direction for all the pieces. That will help when there's any wood movement so that the expansion and contraction is relatively consistent in the same direction. I want to make sure I don't get any sawdust or dust particles in, mixed in with the glue, so I'm just using some compressed air to clean my work surface. And now uh, I will apply a liberal amount of glue I want to make sure that this glues up flat. So I'm going to elevate the board and I'm going to put a piece of plywood under it that I can clamp it to. This also helps to position the clamps from side to side when it's elevated a little bit off the table. And I'm going to put down a little bit of parchment paper first so that the board, when it's gluing up, doesn't stick to the plywood. I'll start by clamping it with light pressure from side to side. And then I will use some calls across the top and the bottom to apply vertical pressure to make sure that the boards are gluing up flat. and then I'll tighten it up from side to side. I let it glue up overnight and after removing the clamps and before running it through the drum sander, I wanna clean up some of the excess glue. So I'm starting with a plane and then I'll use a random orbit sander just to remove some of that excess glue, which tends to really gum up the drum sander. The sanding belts on the drum sander are relatively expensive, so I want to do whatever I can to prolong their life. Now I want to sand at the minimum amount possible because every time I run it through the sander, 
I'm reducing the thickness and it's making the squares less and less square. When I finished sanding both sides, I had removed about 3 64ths of an inch, so less than a 16th of an inch, and that will not be noticeable to the naked eye. The final board is going to be one and a half inches thick, so I'm setting my stock block to be a little bit further away from the blade than that so that I have room for sanding after it's all glued up. And first I'll run the end of the board through the blade to square it up, and then I'll cut off the individual pieces. And I have enough material here to make two chess boards. One board is going to have the walnut frame, and the other board is going to have a slightly different design with a frame made from tiger maple. When I get close to the end of the board, I'm going to swap out the crosscut sled and just use the fence on my table saw. And now it's starting to come together and it's ready to glue up into the chessboard. And just like the first glue up, I have the board elevated on a sheet of plywood to help ensure that it's flat or as flat as possible. I will use calls along the ends of the boards to make sure that the ends are all lined up. And then I'll clamp it in the other direction as well. And additionally, I will use boards across the top to help compress it and make sure that everything is flat. I have to remove a fair amount of thickness, so I'm starting with 36 grit sandpaper, and I had to clean the sandpaper fairly frequently to prevent it from clogging up, especially with the glue. Then after a few passes, I will change it out and use 100 grit and then 120 grit. And now using the crosscut sled, I'm gonna trim up the edges just ever so slightly to make sure that everything is square and aligned. Now I want to cut a groove around the perimeter of the board, and that's where the frame pieces are going to insert into. So it'll, it'll be a tongue and groove kind of a joint, and the tongue will be exactly a half an inch. So I'm going to elevate the dado blade to be just a little bit more than half an inch, so that there's a little bit of room for wood movement inside. I want to make sure that the chessboard remains vertical while I'm cutting the groove, so I have a tall piece of MDF that I've clamped up against my fence. And now for the pieces that will form the frame, I want to joint the board to get a nice straight edge, and then I can run it through my table saw. The frame is going to be three and a half inches wide, so that means with a half inch tongue, the total width needs to be cut to four inches. And then I'll run it through the planer to get a one inch thickness. Then I'll run the boards through the drum sander to clean them up. And then using the dado blade, I will cut the tongue that's going to fit into the groove that runs along the edge of the chessboard. Next, I'm going to cut a 45 degree miter, and I have a board clamped to my miter gauge that marks exactly where the blade is going to cut. And this helps me to cut miters to the exact dimensions that I need. I'll do a test fit before gluing and everything fits perfectly. And so now I'll go ahead and glue it up. 
And to allow for wood movement, I'm not really sure what's going to happen. So what I'm doing is I'm putting just a little dot of glue in the middle of the tongue. And that way, if the wood of the chessboard does want to expand, it's free to move. And then I'll clamp it up in both directions. And I'll also clamp it vertically just at the corners to make sure that the wood is aligned. Now the frame on the other chessboard is going to be made out of tiger maple and it's going to be designed a little bit differently. It's going to be elevated off the bottom so it's not flush with the bottom of the chessboard. And I've beveled the bottom by about 10 degrees so that you can get your fingers under the bottom to lift the chessboard up. And I'm clamping it up the same way. Now since the walnut frame is flush with the bottom of the board, I'm going to use my router to cut some finger slots in the bottom. And I'm doing this in two passes, so I started with the router bit a little bit lower than I needed it, and then I raised it up. This helps to get a cleaner cut and helps to avoid any unnecessary tear out. I'm going to cut splines to put into the corners of the joints. Um, that helps to reinforce the joint and it also gives it a nice design touch. I'm cutting them to the maximum height of my blade. Um, I would have made them a little bit bigger if I could have, except my blade will not go any higher than this. I've clamped the board into the jig because I want to make sure that the cut is pretty precise. The spline is going to be a little bit thicker than the thickness of my blade, so I'm cutting this in two passes. Now on the walnut frame, I'm using splines made of ash. And on the maple frame, I'm going to use splines made out of walnuts. So I'm just cutting up some walnut on my bandsaw, and I run it through the sander to get it the right thickness. And then I'll insert them and clamp them up. After it's glued up, I will cut off the excess and then sand it down to be flush with the edge of the frame. And then I'll do a little bit of sanding to round over the edges to remove any sharpness and to clean everything up. Now it's time to apply the finish. So I'm using a wipe on polyurethane and I'm wiping on multiple thin coats with a rag. I put about six coats on each side and I really wasn't happy with the way that it was turning out. It, you could see little streaks in the finish. So I decided to finish it up with a sprayer to put the final three coats on. After the varnish had cured for a couple of days, I rubbed it down with pumice stone. This helps to make it really smooth and it also removes some of the sheen that professional chess players don't really like to have on a board. I'm using pumice stone mixed with paraffin oil. Then I wiped off the oil with paper towel.
And then I applied paste wax to polish and protect the board. So that's it. Here are some photos of the boards from different points of view, just so you can see how everything turned out. So I gotta ask, would you make it? Thank you.